The Yazidis, or Yezidis listen EZDs Kermanji Kurdish, Yezidi, IPA, EZD, are a mostly Kermanji-speaking religious minority, indigenous to a region of northern Mesopotamia known natively as a Zikon, who are strictly endogamous. Some of them identify themselves as ethnic Kurds and some of them as a distinct ethno-religious group. However, in Iraq and Armenia, they are recognized as a distinct ethnic group. Many Yazidis consider Yazidism both an ethnic and a religious identity. Their religion, Yazidism, is monotheistic and combines aspects of several monotheistic religions Zoroastrianism, Islam, Christianity, and Judaism. Yazidis who marry non Yazidis are automatically considered to be converted to the religion of their spouse and therefore are not permitted to call themselves Yazidis. They live primarily in the Nineveh province's disputed territories of northern Iraq. Additional communities in Armenia, Georgia, Turkey, Iran, and Syria have been in decline since the 1990s as a result of significant migration to Europe, especially to Germany. According to the UNCHR reports, it is disputed, even within the community, as well as among Kurds, whether Yazidis are ethnically Kurds or form a distinct ethnic group. The Yazidis are monotheists, believing in God as creator of the world, which he has placed under the care of seven holy beings or angels, the chief of whom is Melek Taus, the peacock angel. The peacock angel, as world ruler, causes both good and bad to befall individuals, and this ambivalent character is reflected in myths of his own temporary fall from God's favor, before his remorseful tears extinguished the fires of his hellish prison and he was reconciled with God. This belief has been linked by some people to Sufi mystical reflections on Iblis, who also refused to prostrate to Adam, despite God's express command to do so. Because of this similarity to the Sufi tradition of Iblis, some followers of other monotheistic religions of the region identify the peacock angel with their own unredeemed evil spirit Satan, which has incited centuries of persecution of the Yazidis as devil worshippers. Persecution of Yazidis has continued in their home communities within the borders of modern Iraq, under fundamentalist Sunni Muslim revolutionaries. Beginning in August 2014, the Yazidis were targeted by the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant in its campaign to rid Iraq and its neighboring countries of non Islamic influences. <laughs> Demographics Historically, the Yazidis lived primarily in communities located in present-day Iraq, Turkey, and Syria and also had significant numbers in Armenia, Georgia, and Iran. However, events since the end of the 20th century have resulted in considerable demographic shift in these areas as well as mass emigration. As a result, population estimates are unclear in many regions, and estimates of the size of the total population vary. Topic. Iraq. The majority of the Yazidi population lives in Iraq, where they make up an important minority community. Estimates of the size of these communities vary significantly, between 70,000 and 500,000. They are particularly concentrated in northern Iraq in the Nineveh province. The two biggest communities are in Shikan, northeast of Mosul and in Sinjar, at the Syrian border 80 kilometers 50 miles west of Mosul. In Shikan is the shrine of Sheikh Adi ibn Musafir at Lalish. In the early 1900s most of the settled population of the western desert were Yazidi. During the 20th century, the Shikan community struggled for dominance with the more conservative Sinjar community. The demographic profile has probably changed considerably since the beginning of the Iraq War in 2003 and the fall of Saddam Hussein's government. According to the Human Rights Watch, Yazidis were under the Arabization process of Saddam Hussein between 1970 and 2003. In 2009, some Yazidis who had previously lived under the Arabization process of Saddam Hussein complained about the political tactics of the Kurdistan regional government that were intended to make Yazidis identify themselves as Kurds. A report from Human Rights Watch HRW, in 2009, declares that to incorporate disputed territories in northern Iraq—particularly the Nineveh province— into the Kurdish region, the KDP authorities had used KRG's political and economical resources to make Yazidis identify themselves as Kurds. The HRW report also criticizes heavy-handed tactics. While geographically located in Kurdish regions, Yazidi do not self-identify as Kurdish. There has been a dispute as to whether Yazidi are Kurdish. 
Additionally, the Soviet Union considered the Yazidis to be Kurds, as does Sheriff Khan Bidlizi's Sheriff Name of 1597, which cites seven of the Kurdish tribes as being at least partly Yazidi, and Kurdish tribal confederations as containing substantial Yazidi sections. Modern Yazidi communities disagree with this classification. According to the UNCHR reports, it is disputed, even among the community itself as well as among Kurds, whether Yazidis are ethnically Kurds or form a distinct ethnic group. The Yazidis' cultural practices are observably Kurdish, and almost all speak Kurmanji. Northern Kurdish. Topic. Syria Yazidis in Syria live primarily in two communities, one in the Al Jazeera area and the other in the Kurd Da. Population numbers for the Syrian Yazidi community are unclear. In 1963, the community was estimated at about 10,000, according to the national census, but numbers for 1987 were unavailable. There may be between about 12,000 and 15,000 Yazidis in Syria today, though more than half of the community may have emigrated from Syria since the 1980s. Estimates are further complicated by the arrival of as many as 50,000 Yazidi refugees from Iraq during the Iraq War. Georgia The Yazidi population in Georgia has been dwindling since the 1990s, mostly due to economic migration to Russia and the West. According to a census carried out in 1989, there were over 30,000 Yazidis in Georgia. According to the 2002 census, however, only around 18,000 Yazidis remained in Georgia. However, by other estimates, the community fell from around 30,000 people to fewer than 5,000 during the 1990s. Today they number as little 6,000 by some estimates, including recent refugees from Sinjar in Iraq, who fled to Georgia following persecution by ISIL. On 16 June 2015, Yazidis celebrated the opening of a temple and a cultural center named after Sultan Ezid in Varkatili, a suburb of Tbilisi. This is the third such temple in the world after those in Iraqi Kurdistan and Armenia. Topic. Armenia According to the 2011 census, there are 35,272 Yazidis in Armenia, making them Armenia's largest ethnic minority group. Ten years earlier, in the 2001 census, 40,620 Yazidis were registered in Armenia. They form majority in Armavir province of Armenia. Media have estimated the number of Yazidis in Armenia to be between 30,000 and 50,000. Most of them are the descendants of refugees who fled to Armenia in order to escape the persecution that they had previously suffered during Ottoman rule, including a wave of persecution which occurred during the Armenian Genocide, when many Armenians found refuge in Yazidi villages. There is a Yazidi temple called Ziarat in the village of Aknalik in the region of Armavir. Construction on a new Yazidi temple in Aknalik, called Kuba Mir Dewan, is underway. The temple is slated to become the largest Yazidi temple in the world and is privately funded by Mirza Sloyan, a Yazidi businessman based in Moscow who is originally from the Armavir region. Topic. Turkey The Kurdish Yazidi community of Turkey declined precipitously during the 20th century. By 1982, the community had decreased to about 30,000, and in 2009 there were fewer than 500. Most of them have immigrated to Europe, particularly Germany. Those who remain reside primarily in their former heartland of Tur Abdin. Topic: <laughs> Western Europe. This mass emigration has resulted in the establishment of large Yazidi diaspora communities abroad. The most significant of these is in Germany, which now has a Yazidi community of more than 100,000 living primarily in Hanover, Bielefeld, Sella, Bremen, Bad Oeynhausen, Forsheim and Oldenburg. Most are from Turkey and, more recently, Iraq and live in the western states of North Rhine-Westphalia and Lower Saxony. Since 2008, Sweden has seen sizable growth in its Yazidi emigrant community, which had grown to around 4,000 by 2010, and a smaller community exists in the Netherlands. 
Other Yazidi diaspora groups live in Belgium, Denmark, France, Switzerland, the United Kingdom, the United States, Canada, and Australia. These have a total population of probably less than 5,000. Felignas UCA, a Yazidi member of the European Parliament for Germany's Party of Democratic Socialism, was the world's only Yazidi parliamentarian until the Iraqi legislature was elected in 2005. European Yazidis have contributed to the academic community, such as Khalil Rashow in Germany and Jalil Jalil in Austria. In May 2012, four members of a Yazidi family living in Detmold, Germany were convicted for having murdered their sister in a so called honor killing and sentenced to terms ranging from four and a half years to life in prison. The victim was 18 year old Arzu Osman, also spelled Osman outside Germany, who fell in love with a German journeyman baker and ran away from her family, violating the exogamy taboo. In November 2011, her siblings abducted her, and brother Osman killed her with two shots in the head. <inaudible> <inaudible> Origins The Yazidi people speak Kermanji Kurdish and adhere to the religion Yazidism. Their cultural practices are observed in Kurdish, which is also the language of almost all the orally transmitted religious traditions of the Yazidis. Although the Yazidis speak mostly in Kurdish, their exact origin is a matter of dispute among scholars, even among the community itself as well as among Kurds, whether they are ethnically Kurds or form a distinct ethnic group. In Armenia, the Yazidis are recognized as a distinct ethnic group. The Yazidis' own name for themselves is Ezidi or Ezidi or, in some areas, Dasini. The latter, strictly speaking, is a tribal name. Western scholars derive the name from the Umayyad Caliph Yazid ibn Mu'awiyah, Yazid I, who is revered by Yazidis as Sultan Ezi. Earlier scholars and many Yazidis derive it from Old Iranian Yazada, Middle Persian Yazad, divine being. One of the important figures of Yazidism is Adi ibn Musafir, who is said to be of Umayyad descent. Sheikh Adi ibn Musafir settled in the Valley of Lalis some 58 kilometers 36 miles northeast of Mosul in the Yazidi mountains in the early 12th century and founded the Adawiya Sufi order. He died in 1162, and his tomb at Lalis is a focal point of Yazidi pilgrimage and the principal Yazidi holy site. Yazidism has many influences. Sufi influence and imagery can be seen in the religious vocabulary, especially in the terminology of the Yazidis' esoteric literature, but much of the theology is non Islamic. Its cosmogony apparently has many points in common with those of ancient Iranian religions blended with elements of pre Islamic ancient Mesopotamian religious traditions and Zoroastrianism. It is also believed that Yazidism is a branch of Yazdanism, the pre Islamic, native religion of the Kurds. Early writers attempted to describe Yazidi origins, broadly speaking, in terms of Islam, or Persian, or sometimes even pagan religions. However, research published since the 1990s has shown such an approach to be simplistic. Another theory of Yazidi origins is given by the Persian scholar al Sharistani. According to al Sharistani, the Yazidis are the followers of Yazid bn Unaysa, who kept friendship with the first Mahakama before the Azarika. The first Mahakama is an appellative applied to the Muslim schismatics called al hawarij Accordingly, it might be inferred that the Yezidis were originally a Harijite sub-sect. Yezid bn Unaysa moreover, is said to have been in sympathy with the Abadis, a sect founded by Abd Allah ibn Ibad. <laughs> Genetics Modern-day Assyrians and Yazidis from northern Iraq have a stronger genetic continuity with the original Mesopotamian people. The northern Iraqi Syriac and Yazidi populations were found in the middle of a genetic continuum between the Near East and Southeastern Europe. <inaudible> <inaudible> Religious beliefs Yazidis are monotheists, believing in one God, who created the world and entrusted it into the care of a heptid of seven holy beings, often known as angels or heftsir the seven mysteries. The names of these beings or angels are Azazil, Gabriel Jabrail, Mikhail, Raphael Israfil, Dadrael, Azrafil and Shamkal Shemnail. preeminent among these is Taus Melek frequently known as Melek Taus. In English publications, the peacock angel identified with one of these angels. Ta'us Melek is often identified by Christians and Muslims with Satan. According to claims in Encyclopedia of the Orient, 
The reason for the Yazidis' reputation of being devil worshippers is connected to the other name of Melek Taos, Shaitan, the same name the Quran has for Satan. Yazidis, however, believe Taus Melek is not a source of evil or wickedness. They consider him to be the leader of the Archangels, not a fallen angel. The Yazidis of Kurdistan have been called many things, most notoriously devil worshippers, a term used both by unsympathetic neighbors and fascinated Westerners. This sensational epithet is not only deeply offensive to the Yazidis themselves, but quite simply wrong. Non Yazidis have associated Melik Taos with Shaitan Islamic, Arab name, or Satan, but Yazidis find that offensive and do not actually mention that name. Taus Melik, the Peacock Angel The Yazidis believe in a divine triad, like the Alawites. The original god of the Yazidis is considered to be remote and inactive in relation to his creation. His first emanation is Taus Melik, who functions as the ruler of the world. The second hypostasis of this trinity is Sheikh Adi. The third is Sultan Ezid. These are the three hypostases of the one god. The identity of these three is sometimes blurred, with Sheikh Adi considered to be a manifestation of Taus Melik and vice versa. The same also applies to Sultan Ezid. Besides the triad, the second peculiar feature of Yazidi belief is the similarity between Taus Melik and the Abrahamic Satan the Islamic Iblis. A popular Yazidi story narrates the fall of Taus Melik and his subsequent rejection by humanity, with the exception of the Yazidis. The Qaitba Sulway, Book of Illumination, which claims to be the words of Taus Melik, and which presumably represents Yazidi belief, states that he allocates responsibilities, blessings, and misfortunes as he sees fit and that it is not for the race of Adam to question him. Sheikh Adi believed that the spirit of Taus Melik was the same as his own, perhaps as a reincarnation. He is reported to have said, I was present when Adam was living in paradise, and also when Nemrod threw Abraham in fire. I was present when God said to me, You are the ruler and lord on the earth. God, the compassionate, gave me seven earths and throne of the heaven. Yazidi accounts of creation differ from that of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. They believe that God first created Taus Melek from his own God's illumination Ronahi, and the other six archangels were created later. God ordered Taus Melek not to bow to other beings. Then God created the other archangels and ordered them to bring him dust axe from the earth Erd, and build the body of Adam. Then, God gave life to Adam from his own breath and instructed all archangels to bow to Adam. The archangels obeyed except for Taus Melek. In answer to God, Taus Melek replied, How can I submit to another being? I am from your illumination while Adam is made of dust. Then, God praised him and made him the leader of all angels and his deputy on the earth. This probably furthers what some see as a connection to the Islamic shaitan, as according to the Quran, he too refused to bow to Adam at God's command, though in this case it is seen as being a sign of shaitan's sinful pride. Hence, the Yazidis believe that Taus Melek is the representative of God on the face of the earth and comes down to the earth on the first Wednesday of Nisan April. Yazidis hold that God created Taus Melek on this day and celebrate it as New Year's Day. Yazidis argue that the order to bow to Adam was only a test for Taus Melek, since if God commands anything then it must happen, Bibe, Deeb. In other words, God could have made him submit to Adam, but gave Taus Melek the choice as a test. They believe that their respect and praise for Taus Melek is a way to acknowledge his majestic and sublime nature. This idea is called, Knowledge of the Sublime, Zanista Siwani. Sex Adi has observed the story of Taus Melek and believed in him. Topic. Descendants of Adam One of the key creation beliefs held by Yazidis is that they are the descendants of Adam through his son Shehid bin Jer rather than Eve. The Yazidis believe that before Adam and Eve copulated with each other for the first time, Taus Melek encouraged them to see if they could reproduce on their own. He had the couple place their reproductive fluids in jars and store them for several months. When each jar was opened several months later, Eve's was found to contain vermin and insects, and Adam's was found to have contained a beautiful baby boy, Shehid bin Jer. This lovely child, known as son of Jar grew up to marry Ahuri and became the ancestor of the Yazidis. Therefore, the Yazidis regard themselves as descending from Adam alone, while other humans are descendants of both Adam and Eve. 
This is the reason given for Yazidis being exclusively endogamous. Clans do not intermarry with non Yazidis and accept no converts to Yazidism. A severe punishment for breaking this rule is expulsion, which is also effectively excommunication as the soul of the exile is forfeit. Reincarnation A belief in the reincarnation of lesser Yazidi souls also exists. Like the al e haq the Yazidis use the metaphor of a change of garment to describe the process, which they call kiras guhoran in Kermanji changing the garment. Spiritual purification of the soul can be attained via continual reincarnation within the faith group, but it can also be halted by means of expulsion from the Yazidi community. This is the worst possible fate, since the soul's spiritual progress halts and conversion back into the faith is impossible. Alongside this notion of continuous rebirth, Yazidi theology also includes descriptions of heaven and hell, with hell extinguished, and other traditions incorporating these ideas into a belief system that includes reincarnation. Topic. Yazidi holy texts The Yazidi holy books are claimed to be the Qayt Basilwe Book of Revelation and the Mishef Arez Black Book. However, scholars generally agree that the manuscripts of both books published in 1911 and 1913 were forgeries written by non-Yazidis in response to Western travelers and scholars' interest in the Yazidi religion, however, the material in them is consistent with authentic Yazidi traditions. True texts of those names may have existed, but remain obscure. The real core texts of the religion that exist today are the hymns known as Qawls, they have also been orally transmitted during most of their history, but are now being collected with the assent of the community, effectively transforming Yazidism into a scriptural religion. The Qawls are full of cryptic allusions and usually need to be accompanied by surahs or stories that explain their context. Topic. Organization Yazidi society is hierarchical. The secular leader of the world's Yazidi is a hereditary emir or prince, and the current emir is Prince Tassin said. A chief sheikh, the Baba Sheikh, heads the religious hierarchy of the Yazidis, and the current sheikh is Kurto Haji Ismail. The Yazidis are strictly endogamous, members of the three Yazidi castes, the Murids, Sheikhs, and Pirs, marry only within their group. Marriage outside the caste is considered a sin punishable by death to restore lost honor. Religious practices Prayers Yazidis have five daily prayers, Neveha Barispeed the dawn prayer, Neveha Rojhalatin the sunrise prayer, Neveha Nivroy the noon prayer, Neveha Evari the afternoon prayer, Neveha Rohavabun the sunset prayer. However, most Yazidis observe only two of these, the sunrise and sunset prayers. Worshippers should turn their face toward the sun, and for the noon prayer, they should face toward lollies. Such prayer should be accompanied by certain gestures, including kissing the rounded neck of the sacred shirt The daily prayer services must not be performed in the presence of outsiders and are always performed in the direction of the sun. Wednesday is the holy day, but Saturday is the day of rest. Calendar and festivals According to the Yazidi calendar, April 2012 marked the beginning of their year 6762 thereby year one would have been in 4750 BC in the Gregorian calendar. The Yazidi New Year, called Sara Sal or Karsami Asor Red Wednesday, falls in spring, on the first Wednesday of April somewhat later than the equinox. There is some lamentation by women in the cemeteries, to the accompaniment of the music of the kuals, but the festival is generally characterized by joyous events, the music of deaf drum and shabab sham, communal dancing and meals, the decorating of eggs. Similarly, the village tawaf, a festival held in the spring in honor of the patron of the local shrine, has secular music, dance, and meals in addition to the performance of sacred music. Another important festival is the Tawisjaran circulation of the peacock where kuals and other religious dignitaries visit Yazidi villages, bringing the senjik, sacred images of a peacock made from brass symbolizing Ta'us Melek. These are venerated, taxes are collected from the pious, sermons are preached and holy water distributed. The greatest festival of the year for ordinary Yazidis is the Sejna Semaya, Feast of the Assembly. 
At Lali's, the annual seven-day pilgrimage to the tomb of Sheikh Adi ibn Musafir in Lali's, north of Mosul, Iraq. The festival, which is celebrated from 23 Elul September to 1 Tashrin October, is an important time for social contact and affirmation of identity. If possible, Yazidis make at least one pilgrimage to Lali's during their lifetime, and those living in the region try to attend at least once a year for the autumn feast of the assembly. A sacred microcosm of the world, as it were, it contains not only many shrines dedicated to the Koazases reincarnations of the seven holy beings in human form, but a number of other landmarks corresponding to other sites or symbols of significance in other faiths, including Pira Salat Surat Bridge, and a mountain called Mount Arafat. The two sacred springs are called Zamzam and Kaniya Sipi the White Spring. During the celebration, Yazidis bathe in the river, wash figures of Ta'us Melek and light hundreds of lamps in the tombs of Sex Adi and other saints. They sacrifice an ox, which is one reason they have been connected to Mithraism, in addition to the presence of the dog and serpent in their iconography. The sacrifice of the ox is meant to declare the arrival of fall and to ask for precipitation during winter to bring back life to the earth in the next spring. Moreover, in astrology, the ox is the symbol of Tashran. The religious center of the event is the belief in an annual gathering of the Heptid in the holy place at this time. Rituals practiced include the sacrifice of a bull at the shrine of Sex Shams and the practice of Sema. There is also a three day fast in December. <laughs> Purity and taboos The Yazidis' concern with religious purity and their reluctance to mix elements perceived to be incompatible is shown in not only their caste system but also various taboos affecting everyday life. The purity of earth, air, fire and water is protected by a number of taboos, e.g. against spitting on earth, water or fire. Some discourage spitting or pouring hot water on the ground because they believe that spirits or souls that may be present would be harmed or offended by such actions if they happen to be hit by the discarded liquid. Too much contact with non-Yazidis is also considered polluting. In the past, Yazidis avoided military service which would have led them to live among Muslims and were forbidden to share such items as cups or razors with outsiders. A resemblance to the external ear may lie behind the taboo against eating head lettuce, whose name koaz resembles Yazidi pronunciations of koazasa. Additionally, lettuce grown near Mosul is thought by some Yazidis to be fertilized with human waste, which may contribute to the idea that it is unsuitable for consumption. However, in a BBC interview in April 2010, a senior Yazidi authority stated that ordinary Yazidis may eat what they want, but holy men refrain from certain vegetables including cabbage because they cause gases. Topic. Customs. Children are baptized at birth and circumcision is not required, but is practiced by some due to regional customs. Dead are buried in conical tombs immediately after death and buried with hands crossed. Yazidis are predominantly monogamous, but chiefs may be polygamous, having more than one wife. <laughs> Western perceptions As the Yazidis hold religious beliefs that are mostly unfamiliar to outsiders, many non-Yazidi people have written about them and ascribed to their beliefs facts that have dubious historical validity. The Yazidis, perhaps because of their secrecy, also have a place in modern occultism. In Theosophy The Theosophical Society, in its electronic version of the Encyclopedic Theosophical Glossary states, Yazidis Arabic, possibly from Persian Yazdan God, or the second Umayyad Caliph, Yazid R. 680-683, or Persian city Yezd, a sect dwelling principally in Iraq, Armenia, and the Caucasus, who call themselves Dazni. Their religious beliefs take on the characteristics of their surrounding peoples, in as openly or publicly, they regard Muhammad as a prophet, and Jesus Christ as an angel in human form. Points of resemblance are found with ancient Zoroastrian and Assyrian religion. The principal feature of their worship, however, is Satan under the name of Mullah Taos. However, it is not the Christian Satan, nor the devil in any form, their Mullah Taos is the hundred or thousand-eyed cosmic wisdom, pictured as a bird the peacock. The Theosophical Society believes that Sanat Kumara is the Lord or ruler of the world. 
Just as with Yazidi beliefs about the peacock angel, outsiders have, at times, viewed the Theosophical Society as worshipping Satan, due to the similarities between Sanat Kumara and the biblical Lucifer and or Satan. Similarly, the theosophist Mark Pinkham explicitly attempts to link the Yazidi myth of the peacock angel to Christ. The peacock angel's higher self was represented by Christ, the historical Jesus being Sananda Kumara, Sanat Kumara's brother. Pinkham's claim is that Taus Melek and the theosophical Sanat Kumara are more or less the same individual and that upon the fall of the peacock angel, evil entered the world, causing duality to enter Taus Melek's being. The angel's fallen state was represented by his being called Satan and his outcast nature. However, Pinkham states that the angel will eventually succeed in redeeming himself, thereby symbolically returning as Christ. The redemption of the peacock angel therefore serves as the redemption of the entire world and the ushering in of the eternal kingdom of God. Pinkham claims that for this reason, the Yazidis refuse to refer to Taus Melek as Satan, as this would introduce time and duality into his being, and mean they must acknowledge Taus Melek's eventual and predestined redemption, wherein he merges with Christ, his higher self. The distinction between the theosophical belief and the classic Yazidi belief, is that the office of Lord of the World, is merely an initiation taken by an individual soul. Every individual who takes the ninth initiation also rules the world, and will in some sense experience a fall or incarnation, Allah Ta'us Melek or Satan. The ninth initiation, in theosophy, is the last initiation available on earth and there is only one individual on earth on the ninth initiation at a time. The theosophical schema does not include the existence of higher initiations that exist above the ninth one. The only thing above the Lord of the world is the Trinity of the Logos, a divine and limitless entity that resides inside the sun. However, the earthly representative of the Logos, is the ruler of the world, which would square with the Yazidi claim that Taus Melek is an emanation of God, but not God himself. A sect of the Al-I Haq, who tend to deify Ali, believe that Taus Melek is merely an incarnation of Ali and serves as his representative on earth. Furthermore, the Alawites tend to associate Ali with the sun. In Western literature In William Seabrook's book Adventures in Arabia, the fourth section, starting with chapter 14, is devoted to the Yezidis and is titled, Among the Yezidis. He describes them as, a mysterious sect scattered throughout the Orient, strongest in North Arabia, feared and hated both by Muslim and Christian, because they are worshippers of Satan. In the three chapters of the book, he completely describes the area, including the fact that this territory, including their holiest city of Sheikh Adi, was not part of Iraq. George Gurdjieff wrote about his encounters with the Yazidis several times in his book Meetings with Remarkable Men, mentioning that they are considered to be devil worshippers by other ethnicities in the region. Also, in Peter Ospensky's book, In Search of the Miraculous, he describes some strange customs that Gurdjieff observed in Yazidi boys. He told me, among other things, that when he was a child he had often observed how Yazidi boys were unable to step out of a circle traced round them on the ground. p. 36 Idris Shah, writing under the pen name Arkhan Daral, in the 1961 book Secret Societies Yesterday and Today, describes discovering a Yazidi-influenced secret society in the London suburbs called the Order of the Peacock Angel. Shah claimed Taus Melek could be understood, from the Sufi viewpoint, as an allegory of the higher powers in humanity, in H.P. Lovecraft's story, The Horror at Red Hook. Some of the murderous foreigners are identified as belonging to the Yazidi clan of devil worshippers. In Patrick O'Brien's Aubrey Maturin series novel The Letter of Mark, set during the Napoleonic Wars, there is a Yazidi character named Adi. His ethnicity is referred to as Dosni. A fictional Yazidi character of note is the super-powered police officer King Peacock of the Top Ten series and related comics. He is portrayed as a kind, peaceful character with a broad knowledge of religion and mythology. He is depicted as conservative, ethical, and highly principled in family life. An incredibly powerful martial artist, he is able to perceive and strike at his opponent's weakest spots, a power that he claims is derived from communicating with Malek Ta'is. The Yazidis play a significant role in the thriller Genesis Secret, by Tom Knox, which was an international bestseller in 2006, published in 23 languages. 
In the book, the Yazidis are portrayed as ancient guardians of the megalithic site, Gobekli Tepe, in Kurdish Turkey. In U.S. Army memoirs In her memoir of her service with an intelligence unit of the U.S. Army's 101st Airborne Division in Iraq during 2003 and 2004, Kayla Williams 2005 records being stationed in northern Iraq near the Syrian border in an area inhabited by Yezidis. According to Williams, some Yezidis were Kurdish-speaking but did not consider themselves Kurds and expressed to her a fondness for America and Israel. She was able to learn only a little about the nature of their religion, she thought it very ancient, and concerned with angels. She describes a mountain-top Yazidi shrine as, "...a small rock building with objects dangling from the ceiling," and alcoves for the placement of offerings. She reported that local Muslims considered the Yezidis to be devil worshippers. In an October 2006 article in The New Republic, Lawrence F. Kaplan echoes Williams's sentiments about the enthusiasm of the Yazidis for the American occupation of Iraq, in part because the Americans protect them from oppression by militant Muslims and the nearby Kurds. Kaplan notes that the peace and calm of Sinjar is virtually unique in Iraq. Parents and children line the streets when U.S. patrols pass by, while Yazidi clerics pray for the welfare of U.S. forces. Tony Ligorani's comments on a Yazidi prisoner in his book Fear Up Harsh, an army interrogator's dark journey through Iraq, there's a lot of mystery surrounding the Yazidi, and a lot of contradictory information. But I was drawn to this aspect of their beliefs, Yazidi don't have a Satan. Malik Taiz, an archangel, God's favorite, was not thrown out of heaven the way Satan was. Instead, he descended, saw the suffering and pain of the world, and cried. His tears, thousands of years worth, fell on the fires of hell, extinguishing them. If there is evil in the world, it does not come from a fallen angel or from the fires of hell. The evil in this world is man-made. Nevertheless, humans can, like Malik Taas, live in this world but still be good. Topic. Persecution of Yazidis The belief of some followers of other monotheistic religions of the region that the peacock angel equates with their own unredeemed evil spirit Satan, has incited centuries of persecution of the Yazidis as devil worshippers. <laughs> <laughs> Under the Ottoman Empire A large Yazidi community existed in Syria, but they declined due to persecution by the Ottoman Empire. Several punitive expeditions were organized against the Yazidis by the Ottoman governors Wali of Diyarbakir, Mosul and Baghdad. The objective of these persecutions was the forced conversion of Yazidis to the Sunni Hanafi Islam of the Ottoman Empire. In post-invasion Iraq On 7 April 2007 a crowd of up to 2,000 Yazidi stoned a 17-year-old Iraqi of the Yazidi faith Dwa Khalil Aswad to death. Rumors that the stoning was connected to her alleged conversion to Islam prompted reprisals against Yazidis by Sunnis, including the 2007 Mosul massacre. In August 2007, some 500 Yazidis were killed in a coordinated series of bombings in Catania that became the deadliest suicide attack since the Iraq War began. In August 2009, at least 20 people were killed and 30 wounded in a double suicide bombing in northern Iraq, an Iraqi Interior Ministry official said. Two suicide bombers with explosive vests carried out the attack at a cafe in Sinjar, west of Mosul. In Sinjar, many townspeople are members of the Yazidi minority. By the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant ISIL. In 2014, with the territorial gains of the Salafist militant group calling itself the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant ISIL, there was much upheaval in the Iraqi Yazidi population. ISIL captured Sinjar in August 2014 following the withdrawal of Peshmerga troops of Masoud Barzani, forcing up to 50,000 Yazidis to flee into the nearby mountainous region. In early August the town of Sinjar was nearly deserted as Kurdish Peshmerga forces were no longer able to keep ISIL forces from advancing. ISIL had previously declared the Yazidis to be devil worshippers and had taken the two nearby small oil fields and the town of Zumar as part of a plan to try to seize Mosul's hydroelectric dam. 
Up to 200,000 people including an estimated 40,000 Yazidi fled the city before it was captured by ISIL forces, giving rise to fears of a humanitarian tragedy. Alongside the local Yazidis fleeing Sinjar were Yazidis and Shiites who fled to the city a month earlier when ISIL captured the town of Tal Afar. Most of the population fleeing Sinjar retreated by trekking up nearby mountains with the ultimate goal of reaching Doak in Iraqi Kurdistan normally a five-hour drive by car. Concerns for the elderly and those of fragile health were expressed by the refugees, who told reporters of their lack of water. Reports coming from Sinjar stated that sick or elderly Yazidi who could not make the trek were being executed by ISIL. Yazidi parliamentarian Haji Gondaur told reporters that, "...in our history, we have suffered 72 massacres. We are worried Sinjar could be a 73rd." UN groups say at least 40,000 members of the Yazidi sect, many of them women and children, had taken refuge in nine locations on Mount Sinjar, a craggy, 1,400 meters 4, feet high ridge identified in local legend as the final resting place of Noah's Ark, facing slaughter at the hands of jihadists surrounding them below if they fled or death by dehydration if they stayed. Between 20,000 and 30,000 Yazidis, most of them women and children, besieged by ISIL, escaped from the mountain after the People's Protection Units YPG and Kurdistan Workers' Party PKK intervened to stop ISIL and opened a humanitarian corridor for them, helping them cross the Tigris into Rojava. Some Yazidis minority were later escorted back to Iraqi Kurdistan by Peshmerga and YPG forces. Kurdish officials have said their plight received international media coverage, which led United States President Barack Obama to authorize humanitarian airdrops of meals and water to thousands of Yazidi and Christian religious minorities trapped on Sinjar Mountain. President Obama also authorized targeted airstrikes against Islamic militants in support of the beleaguered religious minority, and to protect American military personnel in northwest Iraq. American humanitarian assistance began on 7 August 2014, with the UK Royal Air Force subsequently contributing to the relief effort. At an emergency meeting in London, Australian Prime Minister Tony Abbott also pledged humanitarian support, while European nations resolved to join the US in helping to arm Peshmerga fighters aiding the Yazidis with more advanced weaponry. Later PKK and YPG fighters with Peshmergas and support of the US airstrikes helped the rest of the trapped Yazidis to escape from the mountain. One relief worker in the evacuation operation described the conditions on Mount Sinjar as a genocide, having witnessed hundreds of corpses. Yazidi girls in Iraq allegedly raped by ISIL fighters have committed suicide by jumping to their death from Mount Sinjar, as described in a witness statement. In Sinjar, ISIL destroyed a Shiite shrine and demanded that the remaining population convert to their version of Islam, pay jizya a religious tax, or be executed. Captured women are treated as sex slaves or spoils of war, some are driven to suicide. Women and girls who convert to Islam are sold as brides, those who refuse to convert are tortured, raped and eventually murdered. Babies born in the prison where the women are held are taken from their mothers to an unknown fate. Nadia Murad, a Yazidi human rights activist and 2018 Nobel Peace Prize winner was kidnapped and used as a sex slave by the ISIL in 2014. Hale Esfandiari from the Woodrow Wilson International Center for Scholars has highlighted the abuse of local women by ISIL militants after they have captured an area. They usually take the older women to a makeshift slave market and try to sell them. The younger girls, are raped or married off to fighters, she said, adding, it's based on temporary marriages, and once these fighters have had sex with these young girls, they just pass them on to other fighters. Speaking of Yazidi women captured by ISIL, Nazan Bagikani said, T -h -e -s -e women have been treated like cattle. They have been subjected to physical and sexual violence, including systematic rape and sex slavery. They've been exposed in markets in Mosul and in Raqqa, Syria, carrying price tags. Dr. Wadat Akrawi said that ISIL uses slavery and rape as weapons of war. In September 2014, Defend International launched a worldwide campaign entitled Save the Yazidis, The World Has to Act Now to raise awareness about the tragedy of the Yazidis in Sinjar and to coordinate activities related to intensifying efforts aimed at rescuing Yazidi and Christian women and girls captured by ISIL. In October 2014 the United Nations reported that more than 5,000 Yazidis had been murdered and 5,000 to 7,000 mostly women and children had been abducted by the ISIL. In the same month, President of Defend International dedicated her 2014 International Pfeffer Peace Award to the Yazidis. 
She asked the international community to make sure that the victims are not forgotten, they should be rescued, protected, fully assisted, and compensated fairly. ISIS has, in their digital magazine Dabak, explicitly claimed religious justification for enslaving Yazidi women. According to the Wall Street Journal, ISIL appeals to apocalyptic beliefs and claims justification by a hadith that they interpret as portraying the revival of slavery as a precursor to the end of the world. In December 2014, Amnesty International published a report. Despite the oppression Yazidis women have sustained, they have appeared on the news as examples of retaliation. They have received training and taken positions at the front lines of the fighting, making up about a third of the Kurd Yazidi coalition forces, and have distinguished themselves as soldiers. Topic see also Yazidi Academy Topic References Topic Further reading Topic External links Les Azidis de France Yazda, a global Yazidi organization Yazidi Web via the Wayback Machine Being Yazidi, on Yazidi Identity Politics in Armenia, by Onik Krikorian, first published by Transitions Online 2004. The Beginning of the Universe, Photos and a Description of Yazidi Life in Lalish, Iraq, by Michael J. Totten the 22nd of February 2006. Armenia, Yazidi Identity Battle by Onik Krikorian, in Yerevan, Institute for War and Peace Reporting the 2nd of November 2006. Rubin, Alyssa J. the 14th of October 2007. Persecuted Sect in Iraq Avoids Its Shrine. The New York Times. Retrieved 4 August 2009.